Welcome, guys, to another episode of our turkey series. Uh, me and Jeremiah are back. Welcome to the pod. We have a pretty pretty cool guest coming on. Um, I'm stoked about it. Yes, we see you, Jeremiah. Good to see you. Um, but, yeah, we're pretty stoked about him coming on. Uh, I've done some hunting with him a little bit, uh, mainly turkey hunting. Uh, we've gone fishing and done some other crazy stuff, but uh, I'm excited to have him on. Um, he should be on here in a few minutes, but, uh, welcome Jeremiah. How's, uh, your week going? All going pretty good. Been just kind of hitting and getting it, building, building a shop and doing things. Got to do some start, uh, turkey scouting this week and, uh, found a bird on some public ground. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And, uh, so it was good to get out in the woods and look around. So been awesome. a good week. Well, our guest is popping yeah. on. As you guys can see on the screen, it says Tim. That's right. We are having Tim Palmer on. Let's see if he comes on. And connecting audio. He is. Are you there? What's up, buddy? Yeah. Not much, dude. How are you? Good. How uh how's the how's the fam? How's the life? Good. I literally just called as I was walking down the stairs because I was still out looking at tree jobs. So I'd, sounds busy, yeah. busy, busy, but good. Well, introduce yourself a little bit, Tim. I know you were on my video last year, but this one's a little more official for us. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, about your channel and all that stuff. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm Tim Palmer. Uh, I have Buck and Obsessed on Instagram and YouTube. Um, do a little bit of hunting here and there and really just try to make the most of what life gives me really. <laughs> That's right. That's what it's about. Awesome. Um, so I don't know if you, you probably haven't met Jeremiah yet, but Jeremiah joined, uh, my team last fall. Um, he's the turkey hunter as you know of us too, cause I clearly can't do anything except shoot birds that you call in for me as we saw last year. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. That's right. Yeah, not a dad bod. Is that what that shirt says? That's freaking cool. Yeah, it's yeah. What's the rest of it say? Oh, it's a father figure. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice, nice, awesome. Well, Tim, so yeah. we're gonna do a little bit Rock of. Um, we like to call it shop talk. We just you know ask our um, guys questions that come on and kind of pick their brain. Um, mm -hmm. I know you're, you're a you know a turkey fanatic hunting Ken Kentucky and I know you've hunted Maryland as well. Um, but I'm going to start off with um, a little bit of PA question, I guess you'd say. So um, a lot of the birds in PA, uh, you can, a lot of them are mountain birds or uh, field birds. Like where I grew up was mostly uh, cornfields and stuff like that. Have you hunted a lot of field birds? I would honestly say probably most of mine have been in the timber. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of birds that I've hunted, I'm trying to think, I would, I would maybe say 50, no, no. I would say there's maybe a few in there that I've hunted that were like roosting up on a ridge and then I, they'd wind up working down into the fields certain days, but yeah. I, I don't, I never killed a turkey in a field. Now, Kasak make... got one in the field last year, right? Kasak did? Yeah, Nate Nate called. Yeah, I personally have never killed one right, in right, the right. field. Um, that was definitely a um, a field bird hunt. But that also, I mean, those birds roosted. Um, they usually roosted, like, almost half a mile up on this ridge. That's why, like, in that hunt, you know, I didn't go there first thing because right. I knew – they they roosted up on the private up on top of this ridge probably half a mile away but then i just knew generally there was a pretty good chance one of those birds was going to wind up by about mid morning 10 11 o'clock he was going to wind up strutting in that field so that's why i ended up excuse me we hunted somewhere else wound up not coming together and then we hopped over there and an hour later had a bird on the ground you know yeah. So what is your tactic you'd go about like uh versus timber versus hunting the field? What would be 
um, tactics that you would use in the field over one in the temper? You know, I feel like hunting a field bird, I don't want to say it's boring, um, but to me, it's kind of more boring, um, I would say, because in a lot of ways, a field bird, you're basically going to set up and, you know, you're going to put your decoys out and you're going to pretty much call, especially in Pennsylvania, because you can't reap them. So, you know, that's that's a big difference where like when I hunt Kentucky, if I do go to a field, you know, I've got a reaper decoy and I'll just be like slipping along glass and almost like I would spot and stalk a deer, yeah. you know, same deal where I will, you know, slip along and see if I can lay eyes on a Tom out there strutting that I could crawl out on, which I've, I've never killed one behind a decoy, but I got a pretty good feeling this year it'll happen. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I would say for me, a field hunt is a little more, more of that stationary hunt. If you've yeah. got birds that are field consistently, those are probably the situations where it's a great time to hunt with a kid. Like I did with Nate. Right. It's a great, take your wife or, you know, somebody who's not as mobile, isn't going to be up there hiking the mountains. Cause right. a big part of hunting on like wooded area, like mountains or woods or whatever, I believe is being mobile, you know, and being able to use the terrain, use, you know, just overall knowledge, you know, oh. overall knowledge okay, this bird's roosted here, I need to get here. It's more of a cat and mouse game versus a, you know, just set up and sit there and right. wait for something to field. Now, um, sticking with the field thing, what would you do? I mean, I, I think I know the answer to this, but what would you do with, um, yeah, you're hunting a field bird, right? And he's um, coming in and then he like hangs up about 100 yards in the field from gun range. Like, what's your tactic? at that point i know in pa you can't reap them but like you were saying kentucky you can um mm -hmm. but what would be a tactic that you would try to pull to get him closer into gun range man truthfully that's why i carry a 22 mag under the seat and i just <laughs> usually i just pull that out and drop them at about 120 and call it good <laughs> i'm kidding, I'm kidding. Good. <laughs> get back to the house and you're like you know babe it worked out this morning it's all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> no no honestly that is a very hard part about you know hunting a field bird is you wind up kind of stuck you know if i get on a turkey that's gobbling in the timber and you can you know, move on me. yeah you you can you can sit there and either you have a chance to if you have cover between you and him you can sound a lot more lifelike like a hen you know, you can be yeah. scratching around and, you know, if there's a little timber or brush between you and him, you can, you know, you can work, you know, sometimes all it takes is just swinging, making a little loop 60 yards to the right and calling from a different location. And he's like, okay, she's moving. I better go right. catch her kind yeah, of deal. Yeah. Or she's moving and she's moving not closer to me or, you know, like and yeah. it, it play, it can be just enough to free that bird up. We're in a field. Essentially, you're stuck. You know, you're you can't really, you know, right. unless it's like timber and you can like slowly back out and yeah. loop around, come at from another angle or something. But yeah, if you got a bird hung up in a field at a hundred yards and he's out in the middle of the field, like yeah, I mean that, that the other mo that morning when Nate killed his bird, um, in youth season last year. I mean, we were on that bird right off the roost. I mean, as we were setting up, he was, we could see him in the tree at a hundred yards and, you know, eight hens pitched down, he pitched down right in the middle of the field and I'd call and every time I'd call, he'd gobble his head off, but, or I'd crow call and he'd gobble his head off, but there was nothing we could do. He was in the middle of a hundred acre yeah. cut bean field and, yeah. you know, wasn't much we can do at that point so we just said you know what screw it we'll just walk yeah. out of here like going fishing and then turkeys will leave the field and we'll come back and play a game another day you yeah. know yeah one like hung up in the timber uh, mm -hmm. or even in the field 
Um, how often are you going to call before you like, okay, like I'm going to shut up before I scare this bird. Um, and like, especially like with pressured birds and stuff like that. Um, like how, what's your usual, uh, how you usually approach that situation? Man, I mean, everybody's got different, different calling scenarios, different whatever, because everything is so, there's such a broad range of scenarios. You know, if you're hunting mm-hmm. in the fourth week of turkey season and you're hunting on a piece of public and, you know, that bird's possibly been shot at already this year and he's going to be super call shy. I'm not going to call very much. I'm going to be very, very, very soft. And at that point, I'm probably going to use my locator call more than like a like crow call more than I'm going to use. First off, I'm going to try to get as close as I can on the roost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I'm going to get as, you know, I'm not going to call it that bird a ton. I'm just going to crow call, try to keep him gobbling and move as quickly, quietly as I can to get cover as much distance to try to get inside that turkey's bubble you know which usually I yeah go ahead ahead. no like because sometimes all you need is four or five gobbles and you can kill a turkey he's just gotta you just gotta get him to gobble when you need him because we've all been there man i need him to gobble right you know and then he gobbles and you're like okay now i can and uh but that don't always happen. So yeah, hey, using that crow call like you're saying, that that helps with those type yeah, of birds for sure. That's probably a very good in a high pressure situation where a high pressured situation is just keeping him answering, you know, move fifty. If he's three hundred yards, move a hundred yards. And and you'll learn, you know, at first when you first start to turkey hunt and Seth, this is probably something since you're still really in the beginning stages yeah. of figuring out a little bit about it a lot of times you'll hear a turkey gobble and you'll think he's right there oh my god he's right there he's right there i gotta get set up and it's like in reality i mean like last year on your bird when that bird first gobbled on the roost you were like oh my gosh he's right there yeah in reality 200 yards up the ridge in that crisp damp morning air the gobble sounds like it's in the next tree over but really it's you know he's two yards up the ridge um which is why we set up on that saddle yeah because i was ready to get set up where we were at and you're like no no we gotta move let's go gotta gotta move because Mm -hmm. and that's where like you know you're e-scouting we're kind of getting off topic here on the whole college that's fine that's fine that's what we do here (laughs) um but that's where like i like to look at my map or if i know because i don't scout for turkeys like i'll a week before the season i might go listen on a ridge and see if i hear a bird gobble or i'll drive by a field and see if i see birds on a rainy day or something but i don't really scout i pretty much just i drop pins when i see turkey sign year round and if i see and i'll go start covering miles and find them you know right and yeah so like that's where like in that situation where um when we we killed your bird i knew for a fact that those birds there was that little bench on that on it was like hill yeah right 25 flat and back down the hill and when i had been up there in um deer season which was months before I had seen, I mean, it was just all scratched up up in there. Like it was just torn up everywhere. Yeah. You could see up there was, they, they were eating acorns or whatever the heck they were eating up in there. I don't know what it was, but they were just hammering it up there. So when we went in there and I heard that bird gobble on the other side of that little bench, I was like, best case scenario, that's where that bird, you know, in my brain, I'm thinking I'm that turkey. I want to be able to see everything i want to be on that little lip where i can strut my stuff back and forth and i can gobble this entire valley can hear me because 90 percent of the time a turkey is going to want the hen to come to them yeah like that's what that's their plan is they want Mm -hmm. the hen to 
But if you can get in that bubble, then they're going to come to you. Or if he's really desperate, he's going to come to you. But a lot of times their first, their first option in the morning is they would like to have a hen come to them. So he's going to go down there. He's going to strut his stuff. Hopefully one shows up. If she don't show up, then he goes searching. That's why you get your mid morning birds firing up looking for hens. Well, in that case, I had been there before and I was like, okay, he's gobbling 250 yards up this ridge. If we get up to that little bench, there's a good chance he's going to want to come down there where he can strut his stuff. And if he hears something, all he's got to do is walk 10 yards, pop us, pop his head up, look over the edge yeah. and walk back. Where if we would have set up below that, you might've been able to get a shot at him as he popped his head up for 0.3 seconds. Yeah. But if he didn't see it, there's a good chance he was popping his head back down and go about his business and you might have never got a shot at him. Yeah. So in that case, we were to get up there, get set to exactly where he was going anyways, probably. And then it just, we called him right into the, our lap, literally. Yeah. But Which Jeremiah keeps telling me that doesn't all, it doesn't usually happen like that. I got so lucky. No. 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 It doesn't happen like that, but no, no. <laughs> I have turkeys probably for oh shoot, because my dad is not a turkey hunter at all. Like, and my grandfather killed a couple, but he never hunted them. Like, I think he only killed one by himself, and that was it. Like, he had a couple guys call birds in for him, but my dad is, I don't, my dad's never killed a gobbler. Um, and like, so growing up, we just didn't hunt turkeys. And so like I hunted for probably three years before I even killed one and I hunted quite a bit, but I just never, never made it happen um, until I finally killed one. But yeah, you were very fortunate. And that just, that was just one of those cases where yeah, it just worked out perfect. And, and it's same with Nate's bird last year. Like um, it was just meant to be. Like it, it, I mean, it couldn't have been any more perfect when you got two long beards strutting into 18 yards. Like, you know, you guys what both killed your bird. you want. Yeah. 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 I hunted youth day. I went three hunts for three hunts because I killed my bird in Kentucky, drove home the following weekend. Nate killed his bird first hunt. And then Goober here went and shot his bird. And I was like, well, that's three for three. I can't beat that. Yeah. Hang on. Sorry. Not at all. Sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on uh, what you talked about, um, hearing a turkey gobble and trying to judge his distance. That was mm -hmm. one thing when we went to Nebraska last year. The, uh, the Marians don't gobble as loud, and then it's open air, open field. It was halfway through the week we realized we've been hunting turkeys half a mile away, and they were – or we thought they were closer, but they were half a mile away. But yeah, in in Missouri, and I'm sure it is for PA, and just hunting in the woods in general. Before the leaves get on, and if you're hunting before the leaves get on, that bird, it's going to totally sound different. Versus, oh. you know, you can you can't get as close because of the leaves aren't on. You can't, you know, well that bird's going to sound. Oh, what is it? Um, He's going to sound closer than what he is. Yeah. And then I think that's what it is. And then when leaves get on, then he's going to sound, sound further. Yeah, I dealt, you, with, that. I yeah. dealt with the same deal because, like, you know, the later in the season, and that's the other thing in PA, a lot of times – sorry, I had to get more water. Um, first part of the season, you know, you get, you know, first of May to end of May. By the end of May, there's quite a bit of foliage on, and then you wind up being mm -hmm. like, oh, he's way the heck off, and you go running up, up in there to cover the ground, and you wind up bumping him because he was yeah, actually yeah. 95 yards. Yeah, he's going. 180, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is 100% right. But anyways, back to back to put this train back on the tracks, back to calling scenarios. I would say my general, my general just off the cuff, I forget what exactly your your question was, but how do you? It was something about how do you present? How oh, would you? How do you get a bird that's hung up? Like how are you going to get it, your call located into him closer into gun range? That's what the question was. Okay, so how often? 
how often am I going to call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I just I just had a conversation yesterday with this about with this about this with someone, and I said the best thing you can do is get in your mind like you're a girl playing hard to get. Like, oh hey, I'm over here. We should hang out. Yeah. And then the second he shows you attention, be like, oh no, I'm sorry. Yep. You know, and, and just play that game. You know, and if you don't hear him for if it's like it's like a girl. Like, I mean, I don't know, but when I used to before I was married, you know, I played that game a lot, you know. And, you know, like, oh hey, how are you doing? You know, and then they answer and you're like, Oh, she texted back too quick. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let her on red for a little bit until she texts me, you know, like she'll double text me. And then if I know she double texts me, then I'm at show interest or you know, what you know, whatever the dumb games are you play when you're young, you know. But, like, that's really how I think about it in a turkey scenario is, like, you don't want to be that loud, obnoxious a lot of the time. You don't want to be that loud, obnoxious, just call, 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 call. You know, you just freaking call, 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 call. Because at that point, that's not natural. And and yeah. the more time you spend in the woods, you're going to hear live hens. And the more time you, you hear live hens... I mimic them. So if I'm like calling it to Tom and I'm just kind of like, I'll yelp a little bit or I'll just kind of be scratching and making noise and he answers me and then he shuts up from it and then he answers me. And then all of a sudden I hear hens over here that fire up because I'm calling and he's gobbling and they start and they just are cackling and cutting and carrying on. I'm going to start mimicking them almost yep. like I'm at them because they're talking to my man kind of deal, yeah. you know, like. No, you what? Know, you, you, it, go ahead. Um, what are you going to do in like a situation you're calling at a gobble or whatever and a hen responds? Like, what is, what's, what do you do at that point? I answer her. You answer I'll mimic her. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm there and I'm, I'm calling and say, I've got a bird goblin and a hen starts calling at me. 60 yards to the right or 100 yards to the right and she's just like you know just slow cutting you know like just i'm gonna do the same thing back to her yeah and then if mm -hmm. i'm her, like i'm gonna do the exact same thing back to her and i'm gonna start mimicking her because a lot of times if that's a real territorial hen she may come to me. So yeah. now I've got a decoy. And a lot of times that'll pull a Tom in. In fact, I don't know if you guys watched. Um, I just saw. I just watched um, Zach uh, Farinball's hunt mm -hmm. from the hunting. Club. That yeah. was exactly yeah. what happened to them. Mm -hmm. so I started answering. He started. And Nick says, yell back, you know, get back on her, talk back to her. And the second he started calling back to that hen. They had been sitting there for about 10 minutes, not calling because the gobbler had kind of shut up and that hen fired up and he started answering. And that hen ran right at him. And five minutes later, here come Tom right behind the hens and he, you know, gotcha. so that I think it's just, man, that everybody wants the magic forum or the magic potion, you know, that you want it in deer hunting, you want it in fishing, you want it in everybody wants that, you know, they want to just know exactly how to do it. And like the best thing I can say to anyone is get out in the woods, listen to yep. turkey, be around turkeys. The more time you spend, you know, if you go and you, you know, okay, maybe if we get to hunt a day together and you get to another chance at a turkey with me, okay, that's cool. But honestly, that's the worst thing for you. Yeah. Cause it's like, like you're doing it all the work for me and I'm just sitting there pulling the trigger. Well, yeah. and it can it can help you learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I can explain what? stuff that's happening, yeah. but the best thing you can do is just spend 60 hours this year, season in the woods in areas where there's turkeys and see them, listen to how they be, listen and, and just start playing the game, learn how to play the game. And you might call too much and that bird shuts up and leaves. And you may go, okay, well, next time I'm going to learn to be a little more reserved you know or i'm gonna you know call here and then i'm gonna move 50 yards over here 
and call there and see what he does. Or I'm going to, you know, and you just play that game, you know, yeah. and I think that's for people that are just getting started, you know, and stuff like that. Like that's the best advice I can give. Just spend a lot of time in the woods and, and, uh, be around turkeys. You know, they're the best teachers. Cause you're going to, you're going to fail <laughs> a bunch. But honestly, you're not going to, especially with turkeys and with anything in life, you're not going to learn nothing until you fail over and over again. And, Tim, you were talking about taking Seth or taking anybody. They're going to learn from you. But if you think about it, like on a job site, you're learning under somebody. And then they said, okay, now you go do this. Yep. Oh, snap. I probably should have paid attention a little more. Now yep. I have to make the decisions. Now I have to know what to do. And so it's the same thing in the turkey woods. Oh, well, what would Tim do right now? Or well, what would whoever I have with my buddies, Garrett, or my brothers, Brian, what what would he do? He normally makes this decision. What? Mm -hmm. And so now it's up to you, right or wrong, it's yours. Uh, but you definitely learn from that. And it, 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 it you grow in it, for sure, like you're saying. You're hundred percent right. And and I think, dude, this is this is my biggest thing with with everything hunting. Is there is we're not in a factory where we're hunting machines that do the same thing every yeah. time. So That's I might true. you know, every whether it's deer, turkeys, whatever, you know, but I feel like especially turkeys, you know, and deer, like okay, like a groundhog might come out of the same dang hole every day. You sit there, you're going to kill him. You know, he's going to be there. But when it comes yeah. to deer, like, and really anything, ducks, geese, whatever, you know, even fish, you know, we're hunting mm. wild. Like, these mm -hmm. are animals that their only number one priority in life is survival and breeding. That is it. They breed. Mm -hmm eat they live or they die and that's all they're that's all they care about and so like you know they're not out there wondering who won the super bowl or you know they are they don't think about that they're over there like so so you can be you can do one thing five times in a row and kill five turkeys and the sixth time you could do the exact same thing and not have one get killed you know that's just how it goes yeah I've got a farm that I hunt. I'll say this and we'll move on to another topic. We want yeah. to, I got a farm that I hunt and I've, I've figured out and the turkeys will do one or three things depending on where they're roosted. It's usually one or three things, but you got to pick one and dadgummit, they could do the same thing. You could hunt them five days in a row. Oh, he picked this ridge every time. I'm going to get on that ridge. You go the sixth day and hunt it like you're saying. He flies down in the field and sides the strut all day. It's like, whatever. And that's, you get so frustrated and you're like, what am I even doing anymore? I'm just, forget this. But that's what makes you go back. If it was like Seth's first hunt, I'd probably not do it anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, that yeah, it's fun. I typed on my screen so I can see both you guys. Did that mess anything up for y'all? No, you're good. You're kind okay. Of now we're good. Yeah. I could only see one of y'all, and I was like, it was weird. So I yeah. just changed it, but I didn't want to mess y'all up. Okay. Whoever was talking would show up. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah, do you got any other questions? I have a couple of them. Yeah, I'll I'll let you hop in here a little bit. Yeah, I've got a few. Do you, uh, are you a traditionalist, Tim, far as uh, no scope on your shot? Somebody yeah, from, or if you messed around with any of the shotgun sights or uh, or uh, dots uh, put on your shotgun, I run a. Uh, Did you I, hear me? I put a red dot on mine last year. Um, I had been running just my. I just always hunted turkeys with my semi. Um, just my turkey, my goose gun, really, and I just throw a turkey choke in and it. The volley. And, yeah, just shoot at them. Um, but then you know more so not even for me but i wound up taking several other people last year and i wanted something that i could hand somebody a gun and say put this red dot on their head 
and squeeze the trigger. It didn't have to be, oh, make sure your cheeks here, or you're looking here, or I just wanted them to be able to, if their cheeks here, if it's there, if whatever, if they see that red dot and it's on the head, it's a dead turkey. Dead turkey. Yeah. And that, that's where I went with that so that if I take my wife and she's never killed a turkey or I take my nephew or my dad or somebody out, I can just hand them my gun and a shell and say, put the red dot on the head and shoot them. You know, um, mm -hmm. I liked that. I mean, I killed, I've killed several birds with that gun now and I really like it. And, you know, I think it also just kind of, I don't know. I enjoy having that little red dot on there. Um, but I don't really have a preference. I'm not like, Oh, you have to do that. But like, that's me yeah. personally. I kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of a traditionalist, but my brother, he put, on a 20 gauge he got for his son his son's about eight years old now and he put mm -hmm. a, a red dot and he put it on there just like you're saying it don't matter where their head's at and yeah that that is the beauty of that for sure it's really really nice oh um, yeah uh, okay this is kind of a new thing it's kind of a little pet peeve of mine um is there's uh the turkey straps nowadays they got turkey, turkey straps yeah, where you can like put around their head and they put around their feet, pack out. I don't know. That just, if I'm going to pick one thing out and say, I don't want nothing to do with it, that one's it. I'm a traditionalist in that. There's, to me, there's nothing like throwing that bird over your shoulders, even if you got a two mile pack out. Yeah. I don't, yeah. To I, me, that's part of the hunt. Don't take that away. But uh, anyway, I don't have one. Um, I really don't have one. Um, I've never used one. I've always just carried them out. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Some of them, I have had to walk a long ways and my arm got really tired. So now that I know there's turkey straps, I might have to go buy one. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I get it. Like, it's being a whole lot easier to pack them out. But, like, that's always kind of been a tradition for, for me and my family. Of, like, your first bird. You're packing him out. I don't care if you're seven years old. You're packing this bird out. You know. Don't they make um, a little? But don't they make some vests that you can like stuff them in, like the bird in the back? Yeah, I, you my, can just you can put them in the back of your vest. Yeah. Mine has one. I usually don't do that just because it ends up smashing them up and they look like crap. Um, you'll mess your fan up or something. But yeah, I've always just carried them out. But I don't think I really have a a stance on that. Um. But yeah, there is, there definitely is something nostalgic about like throwing that bird over your shoulder and feathers flopping and it's just cool. It, it is cool. I will give you that for sure. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I'll ask you one, well, maybe two more. I know we got to wrap this thing up. Uh, what kind of shells do you use for turkey? What kind of gun do you use? 12 gauge, 20 gauge? I'll ask you that. And then what shells have you found that work in your gun? Man, that was long. <laughs> Jeremiah, you froze up. And I'm just like, okay, we finish. <laughs> yeah, you, you froze up in there. But I think you asked me what kind of shells and what kind of gun. Um, I shoot a 12 gauge. Uh, I need to do that again. No, I got you. I got yeah. you. Um, I shoot a Stoger P3000 pump shotgun um it's a three inch um it, it's chambered in three inch and i shoot winchester double x whatever i don't know they're the black ones um like i don't get in a whole lot of technical stuff um i think they're like they're small shot i know i have a like a, i bought the smaller shot so i think it's like maybe number sixes or something um, a lot of guys are trying to talk, well, Boomer's trying to talk me into shooting TSS this year. Um, cause he like, I don't know, it freaking does something for him to shoot one at like 65 yards. And for me, it doesn't do much for me. I'm like, man, I'd rather freaking, I'd rather shoot him with a freaking, <laughs> yeah, I'd rather shoot that sucker at six yards, you know, than I would shoot him at way out there. So I'm comfortable, like, I shoot three-inch shells. I don't have a special turkey choke. I just have a extra full, like, it just came with the gun. It's just a full turkey choke, it said. And I shoot that. It's not, like, something fancy. Um, 
but it, you know, at 40 yards, I still, I feel pretty comfortable to 40 and I'd probably kill one at 50 if I had to at 45 for sure. Um, you know, I'm still shooting a pretty good mm -hmm. number of pellets in a, in a target at 40 yards. And I'm like, you know what? I've never killed one at 40. Um, but I honestly, like, I feel confident out there. How far was that one in Maryland that you shot? That one seemed pretty yeah. far. One in Maryland. Right, didn't you shoot one? It was there Maryland or West Virginia, I thought, that you killed one. I might be wrong. No, I killed one in Kentucky. Uh, oh, I've killed several in Kentucky. I've never killed a bird in West Virginia or Maryland. Okay. I've Maybe hunted... It might have been one of your PA hunts that was like, you were on top of a ridge and you're shooting downhills. All I remember, and I, for some reason, I was thinking you're behind a log, and I was thinking for some reason it was Maryland, but I, I guess I'm wrong. No, I was. I, that was probably maybe Kentucky. Okay. Uh, I think the farthest shot I've ever killed one was like maybe 35. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh! I missed mm -hmm. bird that was behind the log in Kentucky last year, and that was at 40. That was two years ago. Okay, that's um, probably what I had the one I saw. Did you post it on your YouTube? Yeah. Okay, that's probably the one I saw. Yeah, he popped his head up over the log, and I, I instead of waiting for him to clear the log, which I should have done, I rushed the shot, and I'm pretty sure half my pattern went right into that log instead of him. But, yeah. Yeah. I found with the... With the double X, what you're talking about, the double X brand, I've shot that. I've had people that shoot that. I have been personally satisfied with it. To me, it don't hold a pattern where chucks um, might work good for you, but guns and everything else is different. I shoot the long beards. Um, I may, you know what? I might shoot that. I don't know what I shoot, honestly. Yeah, I'd have done. my turkey vest. You just grab the right. same box. The double X, if you go to the store, the double X's are cheaper. But yeah. my opinion, do not get them. Get the long beards. I shoot five, sixes. I've even shot number fours. Yeah. There's my turkey yeah. vest there. Yeah. yeah, the long beards. That's where it's at. But Man. the longest turkey I've ever killed, and that was in Tennessee, was 74 steps. And that'll probably, that'll probably yeah. do it. My brother's killed one like up to 80, but we had to chase it down and choke yeah. it out, basically. Well, now, see, but, now I can of world because I got one, one double X and one L long beard. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see which one gets put in the gun first. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, Tim, I got one final question for you. Um, What is, you've been hunting, how long have you been hunting turkeys? I only started hunting turkeys. Um, shoot, it would have been probably like 2015. Okay. So I so out of all them year them years, those years, um what's the key factor that you've taken away, um, that you've learned? Um, I know I'm getting deep here, but um it's yeah. a good it's a good closing question, I thought. But like what's the yeah. main key fact that you've taken away from that you've learned um through the different states you've hunted and all that, um, hunting turkeys? Man, I think honestly, like and I'm going to, this is a, obviously mainly a, a, a woods timber hunter answer because 90% of what I hunt, 95% of what I hunt is timber in the woods. But I would say, um, the best thing I've learned is take your time. Don't get too rammy. Like take your time. Don't be afraid to be patient and like, you know, I'm a very antsy guy. Like I can't sit. I mean, that's why I'm fidgeting while we're doing the podcast because I can't sit still for very long. Um, so like me and sitting still doesn't work. Um, but I have learned to like be patient and just wait it out. But then also, you know, just be, I don't know, I guess the best, best word I can use is a woodsman and just, you know, learn how to, you know, I guess the best advice I could say is just keep moving, but be patient. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Yeah. Like keep moving, like keep, stay mobile. Don't get 
tied down to one situation. If that bird's hung up and you're No, it's too can't Can you, you repeat that physically... again? You're uh you were frozen up. Can you repeat that? Uh, um is like use your judgment like be a woodsman use your judgment because like if you may have there's been times i've had a bird goblin there for two hours at 150 yards but he's with hens and he's never going to come to me and i burnt an entire morning when i can hear a bird goblin 350 yards away but i'm like well i got one right here screw that bird go be a woodsman yep. and be like I know right now that sucker's with hens. I can hear hens. I can see hens. He's not going to come to me. So make a loop. Go chase that turkey. Drop a pin where that one's at. And an hour and a half later, come back to that one if you don't get that one. Because good chance is he's going to be done with them hens and might come right to you at 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. That's that's another thing is don't be for, stay long. Don't leave the woods. Mm -hmm. that, you know, you see, you drive around on opening day of turkey season at 9 o'clock. See how many guys are driving around in the truck? A bunch. Probably 85% of turkey hunters in Pennsylvania that I've seen are driving around in their truck at 8.45, 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. hour and a half, two hours after daylight. And if now, if you've got like where me and Nate had last year where we went, and we knew like, okay, we got this spot and this part. We're going to hit this one, drive to the next one. That worked out, but – Man, there's been a lot of times, honestly, dang near every turkey we've ever killed outside of a handful has been mid-morning. Like, most turkeys I've been a part of have been between, like, 10 and 1. Yeah. So, stay mobile, but be smart about it. Stay mobile, but don't be afraid to be patient and wait out a turkey if you think he is coming, you know, and he shuts up. If he's coming... You hear him getting closer, but he shuts up at 100 yards. Don't get up in five minutes and walk away. Like, be patient. Just scratch mm -hmm. some leaves. Maybe shut up. Quit calling. You know, there's there's a million things of advice I could give. Yeah. yeah. But I would say, overall, just be a woodsman. You know, be very aware of your surroundings and your everything that's going on. And just, I guess, just read the situation and react accordingly. You know, whether you need to be patient or keep moving or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, Jeremiah, you got anything? I mean, I could add on to what he <laughs> just said. I had a, a buddy and I, um, I had a buddy that uh, I think it was last year. He was taking one of his nephews to hunting and they had a bird working a little while. Like you said, goblin, gobble, gobble. We shut up. Well, they sat there an hour. Bird never came in, never gobbled anymore. But well, I guess he's gone. We'll circle around, do something. He's like, as soon as I got up on my knees, that turkey was at 45 yards, 35 yards coming. Mm -hmm. He's like, if we'd have sat there five more minutes, oh yeah, like we'd have killed the bird. But I've done we got impatient. I'm small. No had that happen where i've been like because i'm i'm rammy i get going i get my motor running and i just want to go and i'll be like yeah you know, i didn't sit there an hour but you know i'll call kind of have one be like, i wonder if that bird's hand up and then he gobbles one last time and i'm like i'm not sure maybe he was just i don't know where he was at but he sounds far away and i sit there for like five minutes and i'm like Oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to move or I'm going to go do this or that or the other. And all of a sudden he gobbles at like 50 yards or, you know, something stupid or, or I stand up and flush him or, you know, it's like, man, if I would just been patient, you know, that's why I say, like, don't be afraid to stay mobile, know when to give up, up on one and when to chase something new. But also don't be afraid to just sit there for an extra 20 minutes and don't call, don't do nothing. I've learned something with turkeys, and this is true, that I would say is true, is turkeys have a memory. And I've heard, I've had times where turkeys have been henned up, and I know they're henned up, and I might call to that bird, and he starts gobbling back, gobbling back, gobbling back. And then he shuts up because he's with his hands. And I might go and hunt all over the place 
right? I might say I'm on a ridge line and I walk all the way out to the end of a ridge and I start coming back. And all of a sudden, an hour and a half later, there's a turkey goblin exactly where I was set up two hours ago. Hmm. Because that sucker hung out with his girls, but he remembered there's a hen up there. And I shut up, he shut up, but he remembered there was a hen up there. And I took off and went and did my thing. And all of a sudden, an hour and a half later, I'm walking back to the truck and Bert goes, oh, right there, right on the same point that I was sitting on two hours ago. And I'm like, that sucker took two hours to get there, but he left his girls and he went up there eventually to see who was up there because he was curious, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So turkey hunting is one of them sports, man. I definitely am not an expert. And I love that. I think that's probably why I, I mean, you can't truthfully there is no such thing as an expert hunter and if you find someone that tells you they're an expert hunter that's the first sign that they're really not because they're a really anyone... expert liar <laughs> so i i said they're an expert liar yeah they're an expert liar because hunting is the most humbling humbling sport you can find i think and the moment you think you've got it figured out you don't um the more you know the less you will know you know kind of deal but it is a lot of fun and, and it's a, it's a learning curve and shoot, I'm excited. I'm going to, uh, I'm fired up for the spring. Um, I'm ready to go take a walk right now. <laughs> the what? I said, I'm ready to go take a walk right now. Me too. I think we're starting in Kentucky on the 12th of April and then we'll be back for junior season here. Then we'll, um, we'll hunt pennsylvania probably the first week and then i've got a buddy of mine flying in to uh, i'm gonna film him for like three days the first weekend or the the second weekend i guess and then after that i'll go to uh west virginia for um i'm going down to hunt with the guys from the untamed Mm -hmm. uh so i just they asked down and hunt with them um this past weekend when i was in ohio at that show so I'm going to go down there and hunt with them and then, um, yeah, maybe hit up Maryland or Ohio, um, somewhere in between there. I don't know. We're just going to see what happens. And if I fill tags might keep moving. Um, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a journey and hopefully learn a lot. So, well, Tim, we appreciate you coming on and, uh, hope you have a good season. Maybe sometime we can, uh, get on a bird together whether it's in uh maryland yep. or pa i'd love to hunt maryland i i've been they, they oh, like yeah, you, what's that i thought of, i did have some kid ask me to come hunt maryland um that lives down there he told me to come down there and so i have thought about going down there but yeah I, that all that whole schedule probably depends a lot on it how kentucky goes because if kentucky yeah. goes we tag out in two or three days then I might have time to come home and hunt Maryland for a day or two or something, but yeah, we'll kind of have to see. I think there's another weekend between Kentucky opener and youth season opener. So yeah, so. I think I think Maryland opener is between the when you get back in the junior season or the youth season. So we'll see mm-hmm. what happens with schedule. But um, thanks for coming on and uh, giving yeah. us taking time to share some things you learned and. Uh, um, yeah, just hope you guys have a good season, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate y'all having me on, and uh, hey, plug yeah. in your plug in your Instagram and YouTube uh, for the followers too; they can check you out. Yeah, um, my Instagram is bucking underscore. YouTube is bucking obsessed as well. So you yeah, uh, you cut out. Can find you- it. You cut out. Can you repeat that again? It's Buckin underscore obsessed on Instagram and then Buckin obsessed on YouTube. Yes. Sounds good. It's an awesome channel, guys. So definitely go check it out. And uh, Jeremiah, good seeing you. And uh, hope you uh, good luck scouting. I know you uh, got on a gobbler. What was that last night or two nights ago? Yeah, last night. Found a bird. Dropping Dude, bang, bird. <laughs> We were, we were working yesterday morning. I forgot to tell you all this. We were working up on one of these mountains. We were doing a big tree job up there. And about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, 
I went and I slammed the truck door. And all of a sudden, six birds, like I say six, I don't know how many it was, but it was like a 15 second gobble. Like, wow. go, 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 go. That's funny. And I, I, we both looked at each other. We both just pulled out our phones and we're like, drop pin, drop pin. Like, we're going <laughs> to be knocking on that guy's door because there was a pile of birds gobbling right there. So we drove around. Oh, he got in the truck, drove up the road, and I freaking screeched at him and he freaking gobbled and gobbled and gobbled i was like oh man okay that that's funny about it so all right guys peace thanks for having me and uh yeah we'll holler at you later